I would love to introduce Mr. Kim Robinson, the most celebrated hairdresser, not just a hairdresser, he's an artist as well, and he's an entrepreneur. And Kim, for all the audience who, who don't know you, please give a brief about yourself. Wow, Pearl, thank you very much for having me and for that wonderful introduction. Thank you. Um, I uh, first stepped on Asian soil uh, over 50 years ago. And you still look really young, darling. Oh, I paid for it, darling. <laughs> I paid for it, trust me. No, I, I embarked on a most amazing adventure, a love affair with Asian beauty. And over the years, I had my hands on some of Asia's and the world's most beautiful women and who have shared with me their insights to do with beauty, proportion, style, and it rubbed off on me and I've been incredibly successful. Thank you for being in Hong Kong, perhaps, and also being with women um, such as, I, there's a list goes on, I don't want to I name know. drop, but anyway. I, but you're from Australia, right? Correct. So why did you choose Hong Kong? Well, actually, farmlands from Western Australia to Hong yeah, Kong. Yeah, you were a farm boy. Big jump, oh. yes. I um, was a colorist in my early days, and I was brought to Hong Kong to work for a, a salon here. Um, but when I first arrived here, the only woman that colored the hair were club girls. And <laughs> if you were Asian it. at the time and you wore lipstick or colored your hair, you were considered... Uh, As a prostitute. Something high to that class effect. prostitute. High class. Uh, who well, can afford to uh, go to a, absolutely. a foreigner hairdresser. There you go. There you're right. So um, things change a lot over the years, but in the, uh, in the beginning, uh, that's why I first came here. And um, I haven't looked back. But, it, but why Hong Kong? It's just by coincidence. Just man. coincidence. I was actually on the way to London because my guru at the time was Vidal Sassoon, whom I was fortunate enough to work with um, uh, a year after coming to Hong Kong. So I didn't wow. last long here. When I first came, I just stayed a year and then on, on the next flight, British Airways to London to, to work with Vidal. And, you know, that was an experience, I must say, because he put hairdressing not so much as an art form, but more into, um, I would say, technique or technical. It was much more sort of uh, like structuring a building, architectural. I think more than that is he's a real entrepreneur. He understands how to brand his name. Yes, and well, made into a big industry. Absolutely. That is that is more than you know a hairdresser or creative person. You may be a creative person, but you, you cannot be an entrepreneur. You will always limit it yourself. Absolutely, he's really a legend. Yes. Legend. Then you back to Hong Kong, and yes. then you start working. And when did you start speaking Cantonese? Well, Your Cantonese, my God, well, you're my, so my, fluent my in Cantonese. Your Gondola is, so is uh, enough to get into trouble, Pearl, but not enough to get out, unfortunately. But I'm so impressed with your Cantonese. Don't listen to Pearl. I'm paying her a lot of money for this plug, by the way. You know. <laughs> but 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 what amazes me is is Kim. You saw the whole society evolved. I mean, when it comes today, it was really different from when you first arrived Hong Kong. Well, I think that's life, Pearl. Um, Hong Kong know, was very conventional, very very traditional, well, and today we were it was British, really international. We were a British colony, Pearl, as you can remember. You know, and if you, it was very elitist and very snobbish in a way. Coming from Australia, I didn't understand the, the DNA of Hong Kong at all and found it quite intimidating. You know, if you were having lunch with the Chinese, it was your persona non grata. It wasn't a cool thing to do. Well, things have changed completely. Change, really changed. I know. I mean, my best friends are Chinese. I mean, I love... Asia, as I said to you 20 minutes ago, that, you know, first stepping foot on Asian soil, I just embarked on the most amazing adventure of love of Asian beauty, you know. But not just that, Kim, you become a hairdresser, not just a hairdresser, but the hairdresser of Asian. All these Asian ladies all flew into Hong Kong asking, just waiting there, asking for a haircut and the most expensive hairdresser on earth. Well, I don't know why. You'd have to ask them um, why they pay. But the reason is... 
if you have a passion for something, whether it's architecture, fashion design, art, if you have a passion for something, you probably will be successful. I think that really it's, it's to do with what's inside of you. I think you're born to do certain things, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're just a, a simple artist. It, you know, if it's everything has its own timing and, and different for different people. Let me explain to the audience that maybe you didn't, you won't know about Kim's brand. Whenever people want to show that they are in the elite and they are the billionaires, they will come out and say, oh, my hair is done by Kim Robinson. And this is, this is quite something. I mean, for a foreigner who comes to Hong Kong and who made really a career and you know all the who's who's in Hong Kong and who's who's in, in Asia. I mean, they all flew in and asked for Kim Robinson. Oh, uh, you know, I was lucky, I think, that I was born with a talent. At the same time, having a vision, because when I look at a woman or look at an, a room when I'm doing interiors or a canvas when I'm painting, you have to have some kind of an idea or a vision how you see the proportion, how you see it as a result. Otherwise, you're just running around in circles trying out things. So a lot of hairdressers, as an example, I find because I train them, don't have a vision on the outside, so to speak. They tend to ask you what you want and then try a bit, try a bit, try a bit, and hopefully it'll turn out. But I'm different perhaps because of my character. I see a vision on how every woman can look beautiful. And that's what my clients tell me, that they get stopped on the street all over the world in, by strangers. And people go up to them and ask them, who did your hair? Your hair's beautiful. Where did you have it cut? And to them, it's priceless. And this is something that I've been hearing for years already. And I realize I'm doing something right because when I see my clients come back after a couple of months for their next haircut or whatever they choose to do, they still look great. But how did a, a Hong Kong hairdresser, a white Hong Kong hair, and, and hairdresser, ended up in, in, in Paris fashion show, couture show, doing, the, doing well, these was, important fashion models, hairdos? Well, I was lucky. I was introduced to a famous hairstylist um, who was the reigning king of hair in Paris named Alexandre, Alexandre Alexander. Paris. He was doing hair for all the shows, uh, all, the, all the top fashion houses. And I was his personal assistant for 20 years. For and 20 years? I know, I was like very lucky that I was able to work, you know, under his direction. And I learned a lot about the French aesthetic to, to beauty. You see, the French have this wonderful way of elongating the neck, of framing the face. They use Leonardo da, da Vinci's golden ratio as one of the bases on how do you frame the face. Because most women I see um, don't have the correct hairstyle for their face or features and don't look as beautiful as they could be. And you know, you've been to a hairdresser, I'm sure many of you listening have been to the hairstylist and they finished your hair and you feel weird or you feel something's wrong or you don't like it, probably because it doesn't suit your face. Now, hairdressers aren't trained to really frame the face. They don't trained to... Yeah, exactly. They train to do a technique, which the same technique on the next person, yeah. so to speak. But I was lucky being in Paris under Alexandre, we were trained uh, to how to do the facial matrix, which where the proportion is, how do you elongate the neck? Wow. Because the neck is one of the most beautiful, sensuous things on a woman. And a lot of people walk around like this, you know, because the well, neck is not straight, straight. long enough. It does make a difference. Yeah, of course. Because also... It's like it the ballerina. Also, and also you want a slim face. If your neck stops here, it doesn't, it will look wider and bigger. If the neck runs into the face, it will elongate the whole thing. So you end up looking more refined and more, more beautiful. Elegant is a good word, yes. 
So I learned this in Paris. I was lucky. And through those times, I had my hands on Audrey Hepburn, Catherine Deneuve. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Elizabeth Taylor, all the greats that Alexander did the hair of. I was fortunate enough to be... And these women imparted their idea of beauty, their sense of beauty. And being around people, as you are too, Pearl, I'm sure, other artists, you know, they have their own DNA. They have their own way of um, creating art that's theirs. And that's why they're so successful. And you, I'm sure, being in this industry can see, because you're born with an eye, who has got potential who is successful, and perhaps who maybe needs some extra work on, which is why I'm here today, hoping Pearl will give me some tips on my art. <laughs> I'm going to drag it out of you, girl. I'm going to drag it out of you. Now, I think we have to move to his artworks, his painting. I mean, from an Australian farm boy to become a celebrated Hairdresser, and now he's an artist. He's been painting for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it was shown, I mean, they are, I remember the story. We bump into each other yeah. in New York, yes. walking down the Fifth Avenue, no, Madison. And then you was just saying that, oh, you have to open my show. You know, someone someone bought and bought bought my painting and didn't even know it was from me. You know, yes, it's, you it's painted by everything. me. Oh I my remember goodness, it's got a so memory how, of an elephant. I so when you. did you start painting? Um, I started um, painting because I was doing some interior projects for clients who wanted help. And when I looked at their I would call it airport art or their art that they were proposing to use. Everything was talking and nothing could anchor the look. And I said to them, look, maybe we need to look for some more. So are you telling me you were doing interior as well, darling? Well, it's all, it's all related to art, a vision, okay? Doing interior or whether you're a fashion designer, of course I'm not a fashion designer, but it's about a style, a point of view, you know? And some people like it and some people don't. But I am a strong character and I think that every room can look beautiful pending the size, the light, what type of building it's in and what the client wants to say. You know, what are they, what, are, what sort of story do yeah. they want to tell? And I, I, I like stories. I like things that are, are working with one, not necessarily themes or colours, but I like to have a story when you walk into a room, what is it saying to me about the person living there or what? They want to uh, present. Anyway, I started doing this, this projects, and most of the people didn't have nice art. And for me to go out and buy, you know, huge important pieces of art with people's budget, sometimes it was a little it limited. Yeah. So I started painting up panels myself, and then I started getting commissions. I've worked with some of the casinos in Macau, private clients, because people like my textures, my work. And I kind of like enjoyed doing it. And that's how it started. I've never had any formal training, unfortunately. I'm dying to go and learn. And everyone says I shouldn't. So, you know, you have to give me some tips. I'm, I'm pushing for you for the advice, Pearl. But I um, started that way. And I've now I'm finding it one of my most wonderful pleasures is to get a, get a raw canvas and paint. I love it. I love, 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 love doing it. So you paint because it's an expression of yourself or you paint because you want to just put on a wall? No, it's an expression of myself. I, I know every art has its purpose, but a lot of the times it's in the wrong position to me. So I paint for myself because you, of what because I like and I've done some commissions but this is not something I like to do because I've done that my whole life. Working around a face, I'm limited to what I can do with certain faces when it comes to hair beauty. But coming down to art, I don't have a uh, limit. I can paint whatever I want. So and I, do you read a book? Do you do something to be inspired to paint? No. Or I'm, you just paint from the gut? I paint from the gut now. I have done things like I get ideas from other people's art, but I never can do it. And no one, it's only a, a me to copy, copy, and it never looks the same. And what's the point? It's already existing, the, the most beautiful piece. 
but I like doing things that are really like an old pair of jeans. I love things that look distressed, lived in. Um, I like raw canvas showing sometimes. I like the imperfection sometimes, like uh, wabasabi, you know, in, in, uh, in, in Japan. I love to, to see things that, is, that have been scraped off and damaged and then repainted over again. I like to see the previous art coming through. I like to see textures. I use uh, clay, I use wood, I use uh, oil, I use um, crayon. I use a lot of different textures to create. I'm just working now with some resin, which is something I'm doing for the first time. And what it's doing to me is, is showing me, you know, that how light reflects and how you can actually create. So things. materials inspired you. Yes, I find that uh, a lot of things inspire me. I, you know, come coming to your gallery this morning, I looked at the colors and the contrasts, and I said to myself, wow, that looks, that's so powerful. Because I was saying to you earlier, Pearl, um, Pearl, that, you know, either people love you or they don't like you. If you're in mediocre, sit in between like... Indifferences. Yeah, indifferent. I mean, you might as well be transparent. You might as well not be existing. So... I play to win, you know, I'm, I'm, I'd love to be a, a, a successful artist, but actually, seriously, I don't care about pleasing people. I care that I like it. And if I don't like it, I burn it. I burn more art than I keep, which you believe. So, so Kim, you know that, you know, in the art world, you would, you would take you a long time, long, long time before they would celebrate you because... Okay. You are successful as a hairdresser to come into this art world. You'll be judged. I don't care. I don't hey, care. good attitude. I don't care. Because you know what? You the, do it for you, if yourself. If you believe everything everyone says about you, you will never be happy as long as you live, whether you're an artist, a fashion designer, an interior designer, an architect. Honestly, you have to please somebody. And if you don't please yourself first, then who are you? You're never going to be happy. So I paint for me. I mean, I'm now experimenting with wildflowers and doing incredible textures with, with very aggressive strokes. And I'm loving what's happening. I'm loving the effect of it. And people say to me, oh, you should have this. You should, why are you don't do more colorful <laughs> art? Why aren't you adding more this? Why aren't you doing that? And I'm saying, yeah, I might get around to it. But at the moment, I'm really into neutrals. I'm into beige on beige on beige on a beige canvas. And I'm thinking it's great. I'm loving the, the mood of it, the texture of it, because it's very minimal. And I, I'm in that stage and that, that mood. And you know, when you're an artist, great. it has to come from within. You can't say, oh, suddenly turn the light switch on, uh oh, the color, and come up with. If it doesn't mean anything to me, it has to come from, otherwise, it's not a Kim Robinson piece of art. This is completely different from doing hairdressing. Hairdressing, you have to please your client. Absolutely. And now you're doing something for yourself. Absolutely, Pearl. And so you express it. And I, like I said to you earlier, I don't care. If they like it, great, great attitude. And if they don't like it, it's the same. And I think if you go through life, like wearing a loose shirt, uh, is a great um, way to be happy. Because you have to go with the flow. Sometimes things work out in your favor and some things they don't. But if you get so caught up in when you're successful and so depressed when you're not successful, you're going to be like a seesaw your whole life. You know, you're never going to be happy. Great philosopher. Well, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I mean, it's great easy because, to talk. Uh, yeah, but, um, but I, I think the most essential things in life is to be happy. Yes. And to be satisfied with what you are. And are you and happy? You and are you happy, Pearl? I'm always happy. Fantastic. Always happy. Yeah. So yeah. now, second question. Advice <laughs> on my art. You have to promise me. You. I no, you I have to see your new. <laughs> your. I mean, this is it. This is something new. I didn't see it. No. So it's, invite uh, me to your place. All right, you're invite right, me, you're and right. then I come, and then I will be your great greatest critics. You millions of people watching out there. You're all witnesses to the fact that Pearl Lamb is coming to my place to give me critique on my art. Okay, I'm holding you to it. <laughs> How do you see in your um, next 10, 20 years on your, and on your development of your art? Not your business, not as a hairdress, I, as an artist. I don't think like that at all, Pearl. I'm just going with the flow and saying, 
I'm enjoying it now. And maybe tomorrow I may change my mind. I don't see it happening, but I might change my mind and do something else. But everything I've done in my life is to do with art. I mean, I love doing interiors. I've worked on a project for five years. Um, I, 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 it's something that's been very dear to me. And I've, I love the, the mix, the just composition of things that are, are in contrast sometimes yeah. that don't actually matchy matchy. You know, Absolutely. I can't stand that. And that's something that is so terribly modern today. And I've been doing it for years. If I look back at the haircuts that I did 30, 40 years ago, I've got a couple of books that I produced. And I look back and thinking, the hair looks modern today. That's how women look because it looks natural, it looks believable. And if you look like a lot of people do flower arrangements or hair or or fashion and it looks so matchy matchy perfect perfect it dates and i think that things that can stand the test of time is something that is something that is like like interiors i like some of the old buildings and some of the modern ones that look great for five minutes and after 10 minutes it's over the look's finished it's done people have moved on where some of the old classics don't date. They just look great still. What is? What do you see as a, as a perfect beauty? I think perfect beauty is not just a look, Pearl. I think it radiates from the woman. If you're talking about a woman who has incredible confidence, laughter, and you can see that she's in touch with herself, discovered her own her her own beauty. Some women never discover it. Some women are still searching for it, especially when you're young, you tend to experiment. You get to a certain age that you find your style. You find what works for you and you kind of stick with it. But unfortunately, I see a lot of women on the street all over the world, not only here in Hong Kong, in London, in Paris. Well, not so much Paris. Paris is a little different. In London especially, the girls with straight long hair like this, they wind it to death, they look the same. And I don't, they, they, none of them pop out. And I think that a lot of women need not to cut their hair off. I, I, you can keep your hair long, but you need a look that's your own. You need to go to, to find a stylist. If you don't know how to do it, find someone who can look at your shape face and suggest you what you can do. Keep the length. I'm not saying short hair. But do something that really is special for you, that you can have a look that's yours. And but don't you, know, you think that as a as a hairdresser or many fashion designers, they don't make things for the client? They make things because that, you know, like hairdressers, you know, you used to have one look and you feel you know, as soon was the same. Yes. Was cutting everybody the same look. Yes, correct. I think that that's you have to go and interview the hairdresser. Go and go in for a blow dry first. Don't go in and book a haircut with a stranger that you don't know, and interview them. Ask them to show you pictures, visual pictures of what they think you would look good at, and think about it. You know before you make take the plunge. But I just think there's so many women out there that really could be stunning if they just cut their hair, and it's the frame. The volume, the the left, the no volume. I've got girls with short hair that come into me that I want to stick extensions in because I think their hair's too short. They think they should wear it longer because a certain age in your time in your life, you need to have something that works for you at that time. You know, because some girls keep the same style for too long. They need to evolve, and they haven't evolved. So you know, I, I think that that so many women make the mistake of you know really. You know, they think it looks younger because it's longer, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you need to clear the shoulder. Sometimes you need to have more movement. I think that it's an, an, a, a, a something I said that, it. Yes. So now I have to talk to you about you being an entrepreneur because mm. we just told that you are launching products. I oh. mean, Kim, never limited to you being anything. I mean, hairdresser, interior designer, artist, and now... Entrepreneur launching products. Well, I mean, I, I have a frustration, Pearl. I being in Asia and doing predominantly Asian women all these years, we've been using products that were developed in the West. All the big brands have developed products for a global audience. Comes into Asia, they put an Asian model, 
They put some Asian writing on the bottle and the formula was never developed for us in the first place. And Asian hair is very different from Western hair. We have a different diet, we have a different uh, weather, we have different needs. Uh, and you can't paint Asia with a brush because the more north you go, the hair texture changes. The more south you go, the, the scalp changes, the skin changes. So you've got different Asian markets that never been catered for properly in the first place. So I've been trying to achieve incredible results with products that we never would, were meant for us. So finally, I've been working with some research chemists and um, biologists in, in um, Italy and developing formulas, testing here in Asia. And I've come up with a couple of really good ones that really are different. They're not Me Too with just putting my brand and name on it. Why do I want to do that? There's plendy of Me Too out there, plenty mm -hmm. of, of same, same, you know, and these new products actually make a difference. And I can, and the clients tell me, and people are saying, you know, look, I'm trying to put my expertise, what I've been doing with aesthetic senses, with Asian beauty, Asian women, and now putting it into a product that I can actually benefit more women. And it's not just the money. I mean, of course, everybody likes money, but if I really want to do money, I would do fast moving consumer goods, cheap stuff and make a fortune. People but take didn't my you name. do a I very tried. fast I hairdresser? I did. I, I did. I closed it after five minutes. No, that was a mistake. I was talked into it. Uh, cheap, cheaper haircut, cookie cut haircuts. It was with a spree. It was yeah, yeah really that was successful. how many years ago? Um, 20. 20 years ago, he developed I've been here a 50, concept. You know. he I'm, developed... Nearly eight, I'm nearly 80, for God's sake. I mean, you know, you look at myself like, <laughs> at least I've had hair at 80. It's not bad. Right? And he developed no, a 70s. concept uh, that everybody can come in and do a haircut, a fast haircut. Yes. It was a great challenge. I loved doing it. I learned a lot, but it wasn't me. And I. You know, when you, you're out of your depth, when you do something that you have no uh, control, and that's what I lost control and I had to, I stopped it. It was a great experience. I don't regret doing it. In fact, I don't regret anything I did in life. I regret what I don't do. That's why at the time I have left, I really want to do art. I'm just loving it. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, if you love what you do, I might be successful, I think, and I might not. Don't but. you think that because you you've been through um, a life and death situation with my health, yes, with your health, and that's why your whole idea and everything. Well, your it's whole, a wake up call. Your yes. whole yeah, your whole aim in life yeah, changes. Well, yes, because you know we 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 sail through life like we're going to live forever, and one day, unfortunately for me, I had a health issue. And, it was you know, a really three, bad health issue. Three you? major surgeries later, and I'm still here. I'm figuring, oh, well, you better do what you've got. You know, you've got limited time. You might as well be happy. Err. I mean, being a hairdresser, fully booked every day, famous hairdresser of the stars, well, big deal. I've been doing it for years. It wasn't exciting for me anymore. And I hate to say without being so blasé about it, but, you know, when you wear the dress 10 times, it's not special anymore, you know? I mean, you've worn it, okay? You've worn the jacket, you're famous. What's next? You know, you want something else that you haven't done. I mean, when was the last time you did something for the first time? And that's what I'm doing now, is experimenting with my creativity and seeing where it can take me. I'll also being creative when it comes down to product, okay? Um, there's so many women out there that have issues with their hair and you know they've tried so many brands and you try it once you try it twice and after the third time you give up you put it in the box with the other things you don't use so i'm trying to do something that actually delivers the promise if it doesn't work then it's not i'm not putting my name on it and we'll, we'll, we'll dump we'll dump the idea so this is the idea i've got some great investors who believe in in the thing the chemists in italy the biologists are really full onto it because they said Nobody wants to spend the money on the product. And I said, you know, people aren't always looking for the cheapest. They're looking for something that can deliver. Okay? Can deliver. Yes, that says what it's going to do. You know, I mean, how many creams have I used? Anti-wrinkle, please. You know? <laughs> I've got anti-bagging, anti-sagging, anti-everything. Trust me, I've got them all. And I live in hope, you know. But, but 
because I'm in the industry, you know, I, I kind of know some of the secrets. So don't you yeah. think that vanity is yeah. your signature? Well, you know, we're all, we're all kind of like looking for more time. And I think sometimes when you feel good about yourself, it's a form of confidence. Absolutely. Okay? And Agreed. confidence is empowerment. And you feel like you can own the room, what you own the street. You, 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 can you gave whatever. a lot of empowerment to a lot of women. Well, a lot of ladies. I'm paying you, Pearl. This is costing me a fortune. I don't know how much it's going to cost me. This, this Pearl Lamb, I tell you. But it's true. I saw many of my friends. We sit around the table. They were all so proud that they've been to Kim Robinson. Well, Even I, have they to say, I have to say, honestly say, I have loved to have my hands on Pearl's hair. Although, I love your trademark look. But you're telling me that you might giving us a new look in the yeah, future. Yeah, I'm really year. interested. This is... Kim, you must be confident of many ladies in, in, in the world or in Asia. Well... Tell us more. Well, I want hidden secrets. Well, being in the business of... T with the, with the, you have the uh, allowed to touch, okay? Yes. Not many people have that. Yeah. When you spend time with people um, and you make them feel good about themselves, they get more relaxed in your company. So obviously people will talk to you about their issues, some of their problems perhaps. But, you know, what people say, all the gossips, the hairdressers, only the hairdresser knows for sure. I mean, I don't know that every woman will do that, uh, actually, Pearl. But, you know, over the years, I mean, you know, I've heard some some dreadful gossips and some uh, very, very private things. But, you know, the doctor would hear that as well. And maybe the dentist would. Well, no, you've got your mouth full of, full of hands. Perhaps not the dentist. But, you know, you, you tend to when Monsieur. you spend time with Monsieur people. Will. You do, you know. I mean, I, you know, I was very fortunate when I was in Paris to have my hands on some of the leading ladies on the French cinema, you know, and, and, um, and, and supermodels. Backstage when they're all gossiping about that their, their, their expertise but, last night, you know. Um, but you became, you are good friends of many ladies. Yes, well, you know, I mean, I spent twenty years with Anita Moy, um, one of our pop uh, yeah. uh, pop A artists. Pop. Pop icon. She was the queen of pop, yeah. our, our Madonna, a, okay? She's really and, an and, icon. You know, and I spent years with her, traveling all over the world, um, you know, with her shows. So I, um, you know, got to know a lot of women in my, my time. Like I said to you earlier that, you know, I've been very fortunate that these women have shared with me their insights to do with beauty, their particular DNA, their, their feelings about it. And, you know, it rubs off. And, you know, you learn from being with people. It's the same with you, I'm sure, doing these... Um, but you really, you know, you know, you became good friends of them as yes, well. Yes, I'm very fortunate to have, yes. But, you know, I mean, it's, I think it's the same with a lot of people. But, you know, you, you have to be discreet, Pearl. I mean, as much as anyone says, you know, what are the secrets to the stars? I mean, people ask me all the time, any secrets backstage, what happens? You know, of course, you know, well, I'm trying to tap my head thinking any secrets because to me it's sometimes I see one ear out the other most of the time. And, you know, but, you know, one of the biggest things that I know for sure, being in the hairdressing industry, which actually now I'm pretty much moving away from. I've closed the Hong Kong salon after oh, 15 yeah. years. Oh, yeah, another big thing that we should talk about because your O salon must be the most expensive rental. You must be at the oh, well, highest rental know. of all hairdresser salon. In the world, well, in you know, the world, well, and yeah. it was it was in the most prominent shopping center on the ground floor, and we were constantly amazed because all the ladies go in, goes out, and you only have you and another hairdresser, right? Correct. Only two. Yes. And this is the most expensive rental. Well, you know, <laughs> I and then it wasn't the most expensive when I first moved in. We were there 22 years, and um, fortunately, we we had to, we were asked to move because Sotheby's uh, I know, taking I know, over the whole building and then kicked us out. But you know what? One door opens, 
another, another one, one closes, so to speak, or whatever. Um, so Kim Robinson movie out of uh, the Chatter House has been the news of Hong Kong. So we have to say that how how important and how how much of a celebrity status you have. It is it is no. in the newspaper. Well, you know, they they made a bigger deal out of it than actually for me because, you know, we all get to a stage in life, Pearl, and hopefully one day you too, you know, when we live long enough, things change, opportunities change, and the way we feel about doing certain things change. Maybe the same husband change, you know? <laughs> you know, we need to change sometimes. Boyfriends, girlfriends, salon locations. And I've decided that, you know, maybe it's time for me to do something else. Because, you know, it's fully walked every day, busy running around like a chicken with no head on all the time, became a bit blah for but me. But for you your know? temporary head, hair salon, you are in a warehouse area with all wow. these ladies wearing all the labels, top or couture, running, queuing up and going into your salon. You know, oh. they, they won't let me go for the time being, unfortunately, but I'm... Um, helping some of them out th through a studio I've got in a, in, a, in a warehouse, just a few of them, not, you know, it's not like before, but, you know, um, but going back to the question, you know, about being a confidant, you know, I mean, I think in that a bygone era today with the internet and with the whole new generation, I don't think it's quite the same thing. I think that that is a, a thing that was from the past era, from perhaps your mum's era, your grandmother's era. I think the modern woman today has little time on the salon, lit, less time at home. She's got a full-time job. If she's married or if she has kids, I mean, she has no time for herself. And she's putting herself on sale, basically. She's scrambling to put it all together. And I don't think that the hairdresser is such an important position as it may have been from a bygone era where ladies at leisure went to the salon to hang out. I think that's different now. I think things are changing. What do you think um, does social media influence the way of how you create a hairdo? Not for me because I'm always, I'm not doing it as an art piece on the head and copying you know, we can get influenced by, oh, I like the look of this style, and the client might show me a picture from social media. But most of my clients mm -hmm. want a look that works for them, and they want my advice. So that's why they're paying. They want me to, de to develop a look that works for their f features. That's what they're paying me for. And that's what I do very well, I believe. Um, but there are people out there that maybe don't have the experience I have and need pictures or need other things to help them. But, you know, most of my clients and women who came, come to, if you went to, to uh, let me say, uh, you know, uh, Saint Laurent or whatever brand you want, you particularly like, and you wanted that designer to create a look yeah. for you, why would you show them a picture of something that you Absolutely. want? You, you you want them to do it for you, you know? It's like, you know, I, if I came to your gallery and I said, look, I'm looking for this kind of art, why would I come to see you? You know, I would come to look at what you're endorsing, what you have chosen for me to purchase. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm one of your clients, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yes, you did. Okay, Hello. you bought you bought, you bought the Sushal Bai. Yes. Thank you. Excuse me, they're in Thank my you. home in Australia. In Australia, very, you, you got I it back. I took them all the way there because they are stunning and I, I'm never getting rid of them. Thank you so much. I, but all these years you've been doing hairdressing, um, are there changes of the look? Of course. You know, we're living in a new era. So so every 10 years or every few years, your ladies it's, will come in and say, to Kim, mm, I want a new look. No, not every 10 years. That could be every time. I've got clients that want to change constantly. But there really is about really the, the, the time in which we live. You know, it's got contemporary woman. 
wants a look that works for her. That's a great cut that she looks good every day. But if you go your... back, if you go back, say 10, 15 years ago, perhaps the, the, the consumer then was more influenced by what the trend was. I don't think to, there's a trend today. If you look at it, a lot of women, whether it's short pants, long pants, wide pants, skinny pants, high boots, short boots, flat shoes. I mean, there's so much on offer out there. I think that's a, that's a change. I think women today aren't being dictated to. It's the same with Art Pearl. I mean, if you look at what's on the show, you've got Mr. Doodle on, on, you know, on, on show now. I mean, next minute you'll have somebody else completely different. You know, there's so many but choices. Does, but don't hairdresser or your styles is, is influenced by fashion. Fashion and hair, mm -hmm. hairdressing, they go hand in hand. No? Yes and no. I think that you can't just dictate by what fashion is showing. If you look what's on the runway, I don't know whether if people like a lot of that look. Sometimes it's something, it doesn't work for you. I mean, you don't have runway hair. No, no, I don't. So, you know, I mean, I haven't shaved my head off. All the latest cuts, all the boys are shaving up and doing the, the oh, shake up side yeah. thing. It's kind of like see the skin at the side and you've got a bit of hair on top and a bit of, I don't like it on me, but I think it looks great on some guys. I mean, I think it works, but I think it's a personal thing. So I'm not a big advocate on following the trend the trend, okay? So to me, I think it's all what works for you. And to find a look that works, that makes you feel beautiful, confident, and empowered is the most important thing. And that's a trend. Absolutely, I like that. I know a lot of men also come and come to you for for cutting their hair. Yes. And you know, men, that... and men cut their hair quite often. And you are really, very expensive. So do they come all the time? And so is art from Pearl Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? I You have to ask them, okay, why they pay. You are absolutely right. Okay, I, it's not for me to judge. But the thing is, if they want to book my time and have me to create a look, I don't think they're worried about the price, otherwise they won't come. No, yeah, I won't absolutely. work into Chanel or Hermes or, or go or buy haute couture if I couldn't afford. I won't walk into Pearl Lamb's gallery if I'm looking for cheap art. I'm looking for something that has a sense that Pearl has endorsed and I'm willing to pay because it's at Pearl Lamb gal gallery. This is not airport art, okay? So I think the same for whether it's men or a woman, what you're investing in is yourself, okay? And to them, it's important. But um, but isn't that really limited to do men's hair? Because no. there's only certain well, style. It's, it's limited if what they come in with, but a lot of men have the wrong haircut for their shape face. A lot of men so, have bozo looking hair I'm, and they want, they're, they're executives and they want to make an impression and they look kind of like uh, a bit blur to okay, me, you know? But, so. I'm not talking about trend. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make them look like freaks. I just want to but give the them thing, a cut that works for them and gives them confidence. But the thing That's is... That's what I do. Is, I is sell they, empowerment. I That's know, what I do. I know. But yeah. if they come in with short hair, then how can you do anything? Well, so we ask them to grow longer or, or Sometimes how? I tell them that their hair's too short to do what I want. Sometimes it isn't and I can readjust it. Sometimes um, they're not my type of client. I've got... Clients that fly in on I their know. private jets I with know. their with their with their wives or girlfriends, and then they sit there and see what I do to the girlfriend and wife, and then they want to be next because they see the change, you know. And you know what? It's priceless, Pearl. When you feel beautiful, and some of women I've touched, it's for the first time, and I've I got women cry, and I thought they don't, they cry because they hate their hair. No, they they said they've never felt this beautiful. And they, they feel that's pri it's priceless to them. So to me, you know, I think a lot of women, you know, go through life, you know, not finding their beauty, not really being in, you know, they, they get nervous. They've tried this hairdresser, tried that hairdresser. They've made mistakes. They couldn't handle it. They didn't like it. So they get nervous. So they shut down and do nothing except keep their hair long. Then one day they pop in to see me because someone recommended and I change them 
and they never leave me because they feel that that's priceless to them because it's be they feel beautiful. Bravo, Kim. Bravo. Kim, I was told that when Diana, when Princess Di came to Hong Kong, visit Hong Kong, mm. you were the one who did her hair. Oh, tell me, God, tell me about her, her experience, especially well, now. Do you know, Trump. I have to tell you, it was a bit of a disaster, actually. I got a fax in those days. We didn't have, mo there was no yeah. uh, mobile phones. I'm going back 1996, okay. Uh, she was having on her, she was going through a rough time in the media and she was in Hong Kong and I got a fax from, Gov from Kensington Palace in London um, asking for me to, for my services for HRH, the Princess of Wales, okay, to take care of her hair during her Hong Kong visit. Uh, visit. Anyway, I thought it was a joke from one of my friends because nobody <laughs> sends me this. So I sent back the fact saying, sure, I'd love to do Di's hair and if she wants to go clubbing afterwards, let me know. <laughs> and I get a phone call from the Secretary at Government House here in Hong Kong, almost blasting me out of the, the phone. You know, <laughs> are you kidding? I mean, this is like serious. Anyway, but when so, so when she arrived, uh, the first thing she said to me, so, so you're the infamous Kim that wants to take me clubbing. <laughs> and then I said, I'm sorry, Your Majesty. And she says, that's not me, that's my mother-in-law. You can call me Diana. <laughs> that's how we started the conversation. Oh, that's very sweet. She was so down to earth and so great. I mean, I, I will never forget the experience. Anyway, but um, she said to me, look, I'm here for a charity to promote uh, her, one of her causes, and I actually can't remember what it was, to be honest. But she said to me, don't give me anything strange. I just want something very simple and keep my style thing. Anyway, I blew it straighter and more slick than she perhaps normally would wear it. And she said to me, oh, my God, I love my hair. And I said, oh, I said, oh, thank you. And she said, and she said oh, well, I'd like to have you come with me everywhere. She says, you're so fast and you're so good and blah, 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 blah. And I said to her, you know, like, oh, I said, she gives me, can you, you know, come tomorrow and do my hair again tomorrow? And I said, does anyone say no to you? She goes, <laughs> yes, she says to me, my husband. <laughs> I, I nearly died. I thought, my God, this has been recorded. I'm going to be, you know, this is going to be a nightmare. Anyway, but uh, she was amazing. Okay, it's now more down to earth. Um, the crime TV oh, series don't start has me on it. What do you think about? Don't stop me on it. I think that the actress looks very like Diana, but the hair, for God's sake, Diana never had black roots with orange overtones inside. I mean, it. Oh, please. I mean, I'm not because I'm a hairdresser, but it just, they've done everything else. They got went details about the buttons on her dress and the details about all the other things, but didn't someone have a look at Diana's hair, for goodness sake? <sighs> Never mind. We will write to the producer and let them I know. I think they One should have the, given yeah. me a call at least. <laughs> or Sam, at least. Sam McKnight did her Absolutely. hair in London, you know. And she, oh no. my goodness! Anyway, no. but anyway, it is. But you know what? She was amazing. Diana was priceless, and we were. I was so what blessed. Nice I was so blessed. You are blessed, and we were blessed. You know, to have her in our in, in to Hong live Kong. to live at the time that she existed. I mean, the fact that you know we were all here. I mean, how blessed were we? You know, to have someone in the royal family with the heart of gold. I mean, what amazing woman she was. But you know what, Pearl? I think you're amazing what you created, being a pioneer. And that's something that is something, there's no one else that you could have copied or done. There was no one doing what you have achieved or did when you started out. And I have to say that you're one of the icons in the industry and also Really, for me, um, being a potential up-and-coming artist is really for somebody to look up to. And I really, really feel honoured that you would take the time and having a chat with me today. So, oh, so sweet of you. you, Kim. We've known each other for quite a long time. I'm mean, your admirer all the time. You know, from honestly, from someone 
who comes from Australia without anything and built your career and and not just local. You are an international person. I mean, and then this you have a heart of gold. This is going to cost me a fortune. <laughs> and you have a heart of gold, which is the most I'm going to have to charge more for my haircuts after yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Kim, for thank joining you, us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening. Thank you.